folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. I'm wearing my brand new t-shirt that my friend Mia and his father, actor Joe Mantegna, which is right here, <laughs> who played uh, FBI agent David Rossi in the TV series Criminal Minds, which is on CBS, the longest running crime drama of all time. I got this as a birthday gift because uh, just last Thursday, I just went to a concert to meet his daughter and Mia's sister, Gia Mantegna. Because he just recently released her single album. Because he just recently released her single that's going to become an album someday on iTunes. Because she's now a very talented singer. Even though she is an actress, been in several films and TV shows. Um, such as um, On Company Minors, which Paul Feig had directed. I know she was in a film with her father, Joe, called Uncle Nino, which I have on Blu-ray and DVD. And she had made some TV appearances, such as um, Axel's Girlfriend in the Middle. Yeah, uh, if you saw the later episodes... Uh, the Middle is on ABC. It's a very popular show with uh, Patricia Heaton from Everybody Loves Raymond. Yeah. And yeah, she was really rocking up the stage uh, when I got to see her. And wow, I mean, she was beautiful. She has a lovely singing voice. I mean, wow. I mean, you should have seen her on stage if you had a chance. But I was there with my mom. Yeah, we were hanging around, you know, along with Mia, and we just had some chicken wings and curly fries. We were just talking while we were watching the whole concert. It, it was fun. It was awesome. I, I really enjoyed it. I got to see um, all of their friends again, and we just had a wonderful time. We were nervous at first because, you know, we had to drive all the way to West Hollywood just to get there, but... In the end, <laughs> nothing bad happens, so there you go. But anyway, I'm talking about the highest grossing film of all time, one of the biggest blockbuster summers ever made, that came out on July 2nd, 1996, which is celebrating its 20th anniversary. Yes, I'm talking about the Alien Invasion and disaster film Independence Day also known as ID4 Independence Day the day we fight back as Captain Stephen Hiller would say welcome to Earth now that's what I call a close encounter <laughs> yeah this is the brand new 20th anniversary edition blu-ray and this is indeed a re-release after their previous release uh, back in 2008, which is a single disc. and only had uh, some extras uh, that are from all the other editions that came out. But this one has all the extras that are from the Five Star Collection. But they added a new documentary included for the upcoming sequel, Independence Day Resurgence, which I just got the Fandango right here. Um, which I haven't used yet, but I'm definitely going to check out the film later on. Yeah, even though it isn't getting any uh, good reception. But this is indeed the film that really became one of the biggest phenomenons of all time. Because it has an all-star cast. you got Will Smith, who's been very popular and very well known for his TV series... The French Prince of Bel Air, as well as his rap group DJ Jazzy Jeff and the French Prince, which is inspired by it. And he went on to do the film Bad Boys with Martin Lawrence. He got Jeff Goldblum from The Fly and Jurassic Park, yeah, who was very big at the time <laughs> as a star, because he was also in, in his early role in The Avengers of Buckaroo Banzai. And yes, he plays um, the 
the satellite technician. Yeah, Will Smith, of course, is is uh, the captain. <laughs> and you got Bill Pullman from Spaceballs, uh, Ruthless People, and Casper as the president of the United States. So there you go. <laughs> They're up there to save the world from an alien invasion attack. Yeah, and this is a really lovely cover art too because it's all shiny. It's a slip cover. Yeah, you can see on the back right here. Yeah, it just looks amazing too. And this is the first uh, Blu-ray release I picked out since I have my previous DVD right here. That has this wonderful cover art, yeah, where they show the the ginormous ship um, blasting down the White House. In fact, this is the DVD that I got after I sold off my holographic VHS uh, tape, which, surprisingly enough, I did keep the holographic cover right here, <laughs> which I'm going to take it out right now. <laughs> See if I can. Yeah, here we go. See how it changes. Yeah. And on the back, you can see the information, and has a signature by Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin. So yeah, <laughs> this is really awesome. I mean, for those who have this VHS tape, and for those who still have it. This is definitely worth owning. But since I sold it off, I wanted to keep this. <laughs> but yeah, and this is what the DVD looked like at the end. <laughs> but the uh, awesome DVD uh, cover art of the same uh, scene, as you know, it's been updated. But this one doesn't have extras. Unfortunately, the Five Star Collection was hard to find, and this was the only one that has the commentary with both the theatrical and special editions, which the special edition has uh, nine minutes of unseen footages that didn't make it into the final cut, so that's a shame, but it's always good to see that. But this Blu-ray that I got, I mean, it was definitely worth it because it has all the extras, and not to mention they just recently released this on Ultra HD 4K yeah because they just uh, remastered the film in 4K so they just make it look even better than the previous uh, releases that we got especially the previous Blu-ray that look already solid as it is but still I mean it's a fun exciting and action flick that has a heart of gold and that's basically what it's about I mean it, sure it does get corny preachy and and just hence not to mention weird too but hey I mean isn't what all sci-fi films were at the time I mean geez and plus you got visual effects that are very stunning for its time I mean they were ahead of its time by the way so of course they're dated but the special effects, of course, just won an Academy Award at the time. So, how's that for size? Because I don't think the sequel that they just got won't win any awards at all. I mean, I know, I still haven't seen it, but looking at the trailer, I swear to God, man. I mean, we sure lived up for 20 years just to see better special effects, because they all look the same to me. Especially since we had so many rip-offs, like... Skyline and Battle of Los Angeles. Uh, I mean, trust me, man. Independence Day is way better than than those films that follow. And this has a digital copy, which I already used, just blocking the codes. That's already been usable. And there you go. You got the bonus disc and the movie, which is on the right. Yeah, it's upside down, but. Has some neat cover arts that they got. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. 
And sorry about the dent uh, on the top. Yeah, I, I got it like this at when I bought it at Walmart uh, for $9.96. It's a brand new Walmart uh, in Burbank, California. So it was definitely worth the price for that, you know, especially for its grand opening. <laughs> but I'm happy I got it. So. But anyway, I first saw this movie in theaters with a huge crowd of people yes there was a lot of crowds uh, lining up for the film tickets were almost sold out completely we had a hard time trying to find a seat when we went to see it on the big screen with THX and Dolby Digital Sound yeah in fact I, I remember to that day when I saw the THX trailer which introduced us to Tex that was done by Pixar and then after that, they had the Dolby Digital um, you know, train sequence, uh, which, oh man, I, I still remember it to this day when I saw this movie. And I remember how loud it was. I mean, tons of explosions, destruction. It definitely brought me chills to my spine when I saw the scene where, you know, where Vivica A. Fox's uh, best, uh, best friend, who's a stripper, who just went all the way on top of the first interstate bank tower which is now the US Bank and if you saw it now they just added a new slide that's on that's on the 70th floor all the way down to 69th floor <laughs> wow but I remember the ships as it opens up yeah definitely use some CGI effects uh, where it has the blue lightning uh, laser beam and it shoots all the way down to the tower and it causes a major destruction lots of explosions uh, all the way around the buildings flying cars everywhere a lot of people were running for their lives just to get to safety and they they even flowed too I mean it was like oh man it was a huge blast it got me chills down my spine when I saw that scene along with the destruction of New York City with the Empire State Building and <laughs> And of course, um, the White House scene, you know, where it blasts uh, the, the entire White House. But they also added uh, the helicopter in the mix, you know, just for more explosions. So there you go. <laughs> that is one uh, trippy film. I even saw it again at the drive-in feeder, where I got to see it as a double feature with Chain Reaction with uh, Keanu Reeves and Morgan Freeman. Yeah, that was a decent film. But I also went to see this movie many times, uh, and I watched it on HBO. I got the VHS, which I sold off for the DVD, which I watched many times, and and of course I now got the Blu-ray. And I would watch this movie many times already, even on uh, even for a digital copy and all the rest. I just never get tired of this movie. <laughs> I gotta admit, everybody never got. Everybody never got tired of this. It's, it's, I mean, that's the whole point. I mean, this movie had what we were going for. A summer blockbuster film. And it's a popcorn flick, too. So, I would watch this many times. I mean, better than all the other films that follow. I mean, especially Armageddon, for crying out loud. And I know they were getting Mars Attacks, which came out later in December, because I guess since Independence Day was so successful, they had a pushed the film back to um, uh, December you know, so that way they won't uh, beat up its success for Independence Day and plus the film was going out on, on home video you know, such as VHS and Laserdisc at the time so it was perfect but yeah I, I mean once again it's it's fun I mean never gets old so anyway let's get to the review it stars Will Smith Bill Pullman, Jeff Goldblum, Mary McDonald from the film Dances with Wolves, Judd Hirsch from Taxi, the TV series, uh, along with Dear John, Margaret Collin, Randy Craig from the Vacation films, Robert Loggia, who's no longer with us, he's from the film Big and Over the Top, James Redhorn, also no longer with us. He was in the film The Game, 
later on. And he's been in other films like Blank Check, and Basic Instinct, and several others. Harvey Fierstein from Torch Song Trilogy and Mrs. Doubtfire. Also, uh, Brett Spiner from Star Trek The Next Generation as uh, Data. Adam Baldwin from The Full Metal Jacket. Lisa Jacob, also from Mrs. Doubtfire. Ross Bagley from The Little Rascals, and he was also in the TV series The French Prince of Bel Air with Will Smith. Mae Whitman, yep, in one of her earlier roles, uh, was which she went on to become famous uh, for her voice acting talents, and been in several TV shows and movies. Uh, Dan Loria from The One Years, Vivica A. Fox. Frank Welker, who did um, the voice acting for the Aliens, and Harry Connick Jr., who was a singer and songwriter, and was in the film Hope Floats and Copycat, who played a creepy killer in the film. It's written by Dean Devlin and Roland Emmerich, and it's directed by Roland Emmerich. The movie began set on July 2nd when a ginormous alien mothership had arrived all the way from outer space and sent out several of these medallion-like spaceships that was heading down towards Earth which would invade major cities and military bases. Where a satellite technician from New York named David Leverston, who was played by Jeff Goldblum, had discovered how to, uh, to crack in the codes that the aliens have used to jam in the satellite signal that's embedded inside the global satellite transmission, which also creates uh, a timer counter, which unfortunately he was lucky enough to crack in by using his Macintosh laptop. So he begins to find out that there's going to be an alien invasion and they're ready to attack. So with the help of his former wife, who's a White House communications director, Constance Spano, who's played by Margaret Collin, along with his father, who's Jewish, named Julius, who's played by Judd Hirsch, to actually gain access to the Oval Office in Washington, D.C. to warn President Thomas J. Whitmore, who's played by Bill Pullman, he's basically a hunk, but he's also a family man who has uh, a younger daughter named Patricia, who's played by Mae Whitman, and he also has his first lady, who is his wife, Marion, who's played by Mary McDonald, who's just basically having a business meeting with several of the, the groups in, in Los Angeles. Anyway, he was warning them that the aliens are ready to attack. So Woodmore decided to order a large-scale evacuation to all the major cities out there, including New York, Washington, D.C., and Los Angeles. Unfortunately, it was too late because the timer reaches to zero. That's when all the alien ships had created a major destruction, killing millions of people all the way around, as several of them had trying to run through safety. Yeah, they damaged everything that was at sight. Yeah, while Whitmore, along with Leviston, Julius, and um, and uh, Spano, had went inside the Air Force One airplane to escape from all the explosions that, that, that destruct the White House and the U.S. Capitol buildings. But then on July 3rd, international military leaders began ordering counterattacks, and that's where we meet Captain Stephen Hiller, who was played by Will Smith, who was part of the U.S. MC squadron known as Black Eagle in Los Angeles who he's teaming up with his best friend, Jimmy Wilder, who's played by Harry Connick Jr., who sadly 
got killed in the attack and then and suddenly he went all the way down to uh, the Grand Canyon as he sacrificed his plane he uh, opens up his parachute and landed onto the cliff where one of the small alien ships that came from the the giant spaceship that they got had appeared attacking uh, every single jet plane out there so he crash lands he survives he went up to the ship suddenly the alien pops up and this is when he when Stephen punches the alien knocks him out cold and he says welcome to earth and then he grabs his cigar and he says now that's what I call a close encounter <laughs> well anyway um, along with his parachute he took uh, the alien just covered it up he kicks it saying what's that smell <laughs> and then finally um, tons of people already driving in their winter bagels had arrived which includes um, former combat pilot Russell Cassie who's played by Randy Craig who unfortunately had been alien abducted uh, 10 years ago and he's been going through that ever since yeah he's also an alcoholic too and in fact um, that one scene he was actually uh, testing out his uh, biplane you know going f which apparently damaged all the crops so unfortunately his son was trying to warn him about that his brother has developed an illness too so he's been feeling sick so anyway, they, they found the, the alien. They sent him down to eccentric scientist Brachis Ocon, who's played by Brett Spiner, inside a government base known as Area 51 that's located in Roswell. Yeah, because we we'll begin to find out that the Security of Defense, Albert Nimnicki, who's played by James Redhorn, that that they've been involved in the UFO conspiracy since 1947 so they've been going on for for many years and they had and they actually discovered the ship and the aliens that they found inside you know, all killed and he begins to find out that these aliens not only do they have tentacles but they can also control mental telepathy so so they can also invade uh, every single mind out every single human mind out there which that's what happened when in the scene where where when they brought in the alien they were trying to cut out the the membrane and and it opens up that's when the alien started moving the his fingers and it was ready to attack and that's when they brought in the that's when he attacked uh, a coon and uses his uh, mental taphophy and this is where he says release me release me now and then he spoke into uh, Whitmore along with the, the security team all the secretaries uh, including the, the the military officer um, including the the general uh, William Gray was played by Robert Loggia. Um, yeah, there was a scene where where Whitmore was um, speaking to the aliens, telling them about um, why they came to this planet. They said they're just telling them that they came here for peace, and the alien says, "No peace." Well, what is and then he asked the question, what is it you want us to do? Die! Die! And, and, then, and then it went straight to Whitmore's uh, mind. And this is where he saw everything that's, that just happened. Oh, that was like, that was one creepy scene right there. It, it really got to me to this day when I saw that scene. 
And I'm just amazed that they actually uh, copy that scene in the sequel. Yeah, I saw the trailer, so I'm not, I'm not giving that away. I, I just can't believe I saw that. But this time it happened to him. So, that's... So, a after what he saw in, in his thoughts, he decided that he's planning on a nuclear attack on every single alien out there by... Uh, by, by hiring everybody, including for those um, internationally, because, you know, they wanted to team up together to stop these aliens from attacking. So it, it's a war that's beginning to happen by the time July 4th arrives, which that's where we celebrate our Independence Day. Because just after, um, which I know, it, it leads to a sad moment because uh, we begin to find out about what happened to uh, Whitmore's wife. Uh, well, it, it really gets to me to that day. So, but, but on Independence Day, Levinson had demonstrated a key to actually defeat the aliens by using a computer virus that could deactivate their force fields. And they also suggested that the mothership uh, needs to be destroyed by uploading the virus all the way. So they had to disable their force fields and the refurbished to attack them. So that way you can finally get even with them. And plus they're planning on using the nuclear bomb against them. So there you go. So that's what they were doing. So President Whitmore had teamed up... Um, with a team of um, all the all the U.S. force and all all the the fort with all the army forces, uh, the military with all the military forces all the way around. Yeah, also with the help of, um, of Stephen Hiller and and also with the help of Hiller and Levinston to actually go all the way up to outer space using one of the ships to go all the way up to stop the alien mothership while Whitmore you know, with the help of Cassie to actually join in to destroy one of the motherships. So and there you go. That's their plan and that's that's what the film is really all about. And I... Oh man, I, I just really enjoy this movie a lot. And definitely a perfect holiday for Independence Day to be celebrated. Because this is indeed a holiday film. As opposed to an alien invasion and a, um, a disaster film. It worked. Once again, I love the cast. I mean, they definitely had a heart of gold. I mean, despite of all the, the corny dialogue that they were given, but hey, it's fun. There are a lot of memorable lines in this movie that I just never forget, especially from uh, Stephen Hiller, because, let's face it, Will Smith was, was the best part of the film, too, when he comes up with all these funny dialogues. <laughs> yeah, like, especially with that scene where he was at combat uh, with all the alien ships out there, and, and he says... Oh no no no! You you did not shoot that green shit on me. <laughs> yeah, and and all all this other funny stuff too, like um, you know some some of the funny moments, uh, some great chemistry with him and and Levinston when they were on the ship. They're talking about the fat lady and and all of that, <laughs> and I, I just feel like it definitely had that connection right there. And, but, yeah, not to mention his uh, chemistry with his father, you know, when they were playing the chess in New York. And, and, and of course, they always bickering each other, and they talk about what's going to happen. It's just, wow, I mean, they were already praying to God because of, because they're trying to survive after what happened since those attacks in, in all the major cities out there. So that's what the whole film is, what it is. Because that's what the whole film is about, you know, struggling them for, struggling for them to survive.
from all the alien invasion attacks that happen. But anyway, I love the score that was done by David Arnold. Definitely did a great job. Give us give us a, a patriotic uh, theme in the mix. It definitely feels exactly like you're really in there. And once again, with the visual effects that they use, with with all the alien ships actually shooting all these uh, laser, uh, all these uh, laser blast going after the the jet planes and I know even the jet planes started shooting a lot of missiles around them to, just to stop them and they had the force fields too that the ships had all of that it's just perfect and the aliens in the movie um, wow I mean you, you couldn't believe how creepy the aliens look in this movie I mean they can go up in all different shapes and sizes but the aliens in these movies but the aliens in this film is just wow. I mean, they got tentacles too, and and their head is really big too. It they have a huge men plane with a small face. Wow, I mean, jeez. And of course, they had used costumes uh, for the aliens, and with the movements and all that went in, so it was perfect. It's definitely um, ahead of its time. Lots of great practical effects that they use in the mix with just a little CGI with the, the laser blasting that they use. They actually use a lot of miniatures uh, for those shots. Yeah, they use a blue screen and they had to shoot all these scenes using all these uh, some cars, uh, some models that they built in with the, the replica of the White House and all the other buildings that they got. They look so real. You never thought you'd see that. And yeah, you can see a lot of that uh, in the making of uh, Independence Day that's on the Blu-ray. Where you can see how they made this movie. It's just, wow. And the sad part is, um, you would never see movies like this again. And it's a shame. I mean, after 20 years. Because I'm amazed that they were still using this at the time. And yes, they've been doing it for for a very long time. That's the beauty of filmmaking is that no matter how hard you work you know you want to make a film this exciting and and fun. It's it's the perfect summer blockbuster of all time. It, you know, the budget of the film only cost 75 million dollars. Wow, that that was big back then. I mean, for a film like this it would have cost even more than $75 million. It would have been like over $200 million. Think about that. But it, it was a ginormous hit at the box office. It made it up to eight, $817.4 million. Wow, that was huge. You wouldn't... Yeah, it was really big. And... Yes, there was some censorship um, that happened uh, overseas, mostly because it had to deal with uh, all this other, because um, it had to deal with uh, with um, all this uh, Jewish and Israel related content that they put into the film. So they didn't want to get involved in those scenes alone. So yeah, it makes sense because you know there were a lot of stereotypical characters in the film. I mean, yeah, the film did have its problems, mostly because of of the character development and all that, but or or the f fact that the uh, that they were using alien technology that they discovered, and it's hard to believe that they can actually use that. To, to create this problem. So yes, there, there are issues with that. But I don't I don't think the character development wasn't that bad at all, in, in my opinion. The cast really worked. I mean, they had chemistry together, and and this movie had heart to it. It was fun. That's exactly what we need nowadays in sci-fi films. And I thought it worked. And I, I thought Bill Pullman did a great job playing the president in the film. I mean definitely the right choice. Didn't expect it for him because he's usually playing all these uh, 
punk type of guys in, in movies, but I thought it worked very well. I mean, I think he's right up there with uh, Harrison Ford when it, when it comes to playing presidents. So, there you go. Plus, he got the fight, too. I mean, come on. He knew... He never knew that this this was going to happen, but but once he found out about it, he was lucky to fight. I mean, he's also one of the bravest uh, presidents ever. So, yeah, and he, he you know he got the fight uh, against him. So he he was trying it out to see if, if the missile worked, and he did. You know, he did it again, and he helped out along with uh, the rest of the crew, even Cassie. <laughs> I mean, I, I remember that moment was when, when Cassie was was beginning to, to use, uh, to use uh, the nuclear missile, because unfortunately it got jammed, and then by the time he was, he was ready to attack, because he decided to sacrifice himself by, by saying the line, "Okay, you alien assholes." In this generation, up yours! And then when he finally went up to the ship, this is where he's, just when they were ready to blast, this is where he says, Hello, boys! I'm back! <laughs> oh, that, that was a fun moment right there. It, it's, it's right up there with, with the scene in Dr. Strangelove. <laughs> when it comes to... Yeah, I mean, who couldn't forget the scene where he was, where um, the guy was riding on a uh, on a bomb, and and it was ready to to blast all the way down to this, all the way down to the ground. It's just, it was perfect. I, I love that that moment, and and that's when Whitmore says, "Oh, he did it! The son of a bitch did it!" <laughs> I know, I, I like to talk more about it, and I, I really enjoy this movie. So, hey, I mean, definitely watch this movie on, on Independence Day, 4th of July weekend. I, I And watch it uh, anytime you like, I mean, no matter what. It's a fun movie. Once again, it's awesome, exciting, definitely hits, hits me at the right pace. And it's the perfect uh, film to watch over and over and over again, no matter how many, uh, no matter how many formats you own, you know, Blu-ray, DVD, Laserdisc, VHS, you name it. And yes, the video games that they got uh, later on was terrible. Yeah, I think we all should agree on on that one, especially uh, James Ralph from, AKA. Uh, angry video game nerd. I mean, boy, it, it does deserve a better video game than that. I mean, they did have the interactive games uh, that followed, and they also had some for the the Blu-ray and the DVD that's in the Five Star Collection and the previous one. But that's okay. Luckily, they didn't include that on on the new set. But that's all right. And yes, I'd rather watch Independence Day. 5,000 times and having to sit through Skyline and Battle Los Angeles once. That's for sure. And if you ask me, this is the War of the Worlds remake. It's not a remake in general speaking, but this is exactly what the War of the Worlds uh, remake should have been about in the first place. I mean, I'm sorry, but I, I was disappointed what Steven Spielberg had done in this one. And it could have been a lot better, but if you love the film, yeah, to each their own. I'm cool. I mean, I love Tom Cruise in the movie, so that's all I could say. And Tim Robbins, but he deserved better. But either way, Independence Day, check it out. <laughs> in fact, watch it right now. I mean, you, you'll never get tired of it. So anyway, I give the film... Four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and have a happy and safe 4th of July weekend, and I'll see you later. Bye.